there's sort of an urgency. I don't think we were, at least I wasn't aware that that existed. And one can claim ignorance, but we've just gone through an effort to get this thing out there in the public and correct. And if we say, yes, this is the correct one, which we're asking our, uh, um, who's the person that now has to do with our clerk, who's mm -hmm. the clerk, to certify that this is the correct thing. And then on top of that say, but oh, by the way, we're not going to do these things. Um, we believe that presents a problem that should, should be corrected. If we are at least implementing a, or requesting a change, then we can say we caught it and we're not doing it and we don't plan to do it and we're making a change, an edit to the article of agreement to reflect what we do, that's one thing. But for us to say we've updated it, it's in there, we don't want to do it, but let's leave it in, that's, that's problematic. So either we decide that this is an important thing and we want to start doing something we've never done before and have four more meetings a year, or at least two more meetings a year, or we make an effort to change it. I don't think there's anything controversial. There's nothing monetary in this, um, especially if we're going to be aiming towards having an in-person meeting. I don't, I don't see this being a, a, a problematic thing, and we know about it. So we would like the board to consider tonight because I think we're looking at articles, is to um, authorize a warrant article making these amendments to the Articles of Agreement. Uh, is, Liz, is Liz still there? Liz is here. I'm here. Do we, Beth, do you or Liz want to comment further on that? Liz, you got... Would you like to comment? No, I mean, I, I think mostly ditto. I just, I, I don't think we want to have an Articles of Agreement out there that we know we're not complying with. Um, and to the extent that we can clean it up and do it relatively easily and have something that is, you know, valid and consistent with our actions, I think that's better than having something out there that we know we're not doing. So... My only concern is the length of time, the lack of public forums or ability to have a lot of public input from a January to a March date. Like I feel like if you're going to look at the articles of agreement and make changes, even if they're just housekeeping changes, it's important to have public forums. So we can still do that even if we agree to put this on the warrant, but I do think there has to be an opportunity for the public to understand and hear whether it's a virtual or whatever i just fundamentally i just can't I, see us doing these and i actually think yeah i think that's actually in the articles of agreement in article uh no, it's not six it's not required it's required for apportionment and something else and for trying to get rid of this uh, uh the graves but the RSA does not require hearing on changes of article agreement. No, but it requires a reasonable opportunity for debate in an open meeting. Right, so we're right. talking about having that meeting. But, right. I, but right. I would not be opposed to presenting this as a piggyback to the uh, budget hearing. It would be very I, I just feel like it needs to be presented in a public way in, a, in more than just our meeting. It needs to be drawn attention to because it is the articles. The yeah. other thing I would say is, if you're going to change it, if we're going to change it, I don't see why we even have a year ending for terms. Why why even have that? It doesn't matter. I mean, if Brookline, one member, three years, one member, three years, two member, three years, we don't need the term dates in there, I don't think. Only because because Hollis has two in a year, and we have to specify which year they get to do the two. It can't then it, maybe, it, it, it'll be arbitrary. Well, it would... Oh, I guess. I, my struggle with that is that means we would have to do this every year. Do what every year? Redo these articles every year. We'd have to have a warrant on the warrant every year to change the term change ending the every single yeah. year. No, because no. I think it says effective with the election of such and such year, and then it falls. I think the idea is if someone resigns early, so then it becomes a one-year position to keep them on cycle so you don't just like blow out Brookline and then start with a whole new cohort from one town or oh, Hollis or whatever, right? right. We can leave have, them unchanged, But if Hollis. you have 2022 we can in leave there, them 2023 un unchanged. in there, 2024. We just thought it would be less confusing to right. a reader to have. 
know, you can change. I would rather see them changed. I just don't understand. Maybe you can explain it to me one more time. If we have year ending 2022, 2023, 2024, and next year we're in 2023, and that's what's in this document. No, no, but it says effective with the election of 2021. So then those become three year terms counted from that date. So it, okay. like in the paragraph above, it's trying to be, you know, that's longer what they did than in one 2003, year. 2003, right. But 2003. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's six of one half a dozen of the other. Okay. We've I don't want to hear. It's confusing. Matter. Honestly, I would agree. It's confusing. It's, confusing. it's confusing. Yeah. Yeah. So you think we should leave, leave it unchanged or change it? No, I don't think you leave it unchanged because now you've got dates that are really outdated. But I hear what Holly's saying, which is, is there a way to just take out the dates completely? So that you're not, so that it's not confusing when somebody else looks at it five years from now. No, you can't change. You, you have to. You have to you have, have to a have specific dates. benchmark where the okay. they count, so you know which one is the three is the three year is the is the two person year. Okay. Yeah, and I I agree with what you're saying. We think about that's a question we ask all the time in policy or anything we do, so that we don't have to continually change right. something. But I think this is unavoidable. It makes it so okay. much more clear. And it's like Tom said, this is not a controversial change. This is a factual mm -hmm. change and. It should be an easy one to update over the years. Mm -hmm. So, like a very simple one. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't have to update it. I'm hearing we won't have to update that number. Right. You well, ever. You will That's not, what I'm hearing. You will well, not have to. We will not have to go into the Articles of Agreement and we'll change the date mm -hmm. ever. Because the count always begins it from begins, yeah. 2021 yeah. going okay. forward. Gotcha. Awesome. I, I agree with you that I would like to either have a Zoom discussion about it before putting it, or I mean, if we put it on the warrant, or attaching it to the public hearing and mm -hmm. discussing it there. But having a discussion about it so people understand what it is and the changes that we're making prior to discussing it at our meeting, because I think that will get moved. No, that's fine. Um, is the budget hearing expected to be a virtual? Uh, I don't think so at this time. Okay. Where is it going to be held? Um, probably in this room. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we'll probably, if we expect turnout, we'll move it to the multi-purpose of the, of the gym. Yeah. So, so we ha have to make this decision tonight if we're going to make these changes and put them on the warrant so that we can average the seven. Well, the, you still have time. This is just a draft warrant so Kelly can see everything. If you're asking about this, I would suggest uh, the action for me would be to go to legal and see how best to word the warrant article and how best to approach it during the public hearing. Uh, but I think we could uh, accomplish it in a, in a couple ways. We have a regularly scheduled board meeting still to come, so we could bring it back to the board meeting and discuss it again so the public knows. Yeah. We could put it as a warrant article and it would be on the public hearing. Um, and then to Chris's point, if the board wanted to, uh, we can uh, hold the Zoom, you know, if we felt that was the need to get the word out. Because I think the piece will be the warrant article without the document uh, is the consideration. Right, that's why I was hoping to, if, if there's agreement tonight, we could get the check, get it checked. I'm not asking that this language be used right. on the warrant article. Right. I'm looking to see if the board wants to have it as a warrant article, in which case we can follow the steps you just described. I don't think we need to have a vote on whether we want, I mean, we would vote once, well, as we do what, when we vote on the warrant. We, we I, I thought we did have to have a vote to determine whether or not we were going to have it as a warrant article. Well, we would do that when we vote on the warrant. Don't we have a meeting where we go through each item and we vote? Yes, yes okay. but I, I think what Tom's saying and what, I, what I'm saying is we just need some direction from the board because it's the board's articles. So if you want to add one, we can absolutely do that. I just need to... Can we do that without a vote? Well, no, I mean, we need direction via a vote okay. to add it. Okay, great. Liz, did you want to say something? No, okay. So we'll vote, so we'll add it as a, yep. as a motion to have you um, do it. Yes, got it. You, Tom, you better have a motion plan because I don't know what you're going to say. So you got a motion? <laughs> yeah, you are now or in deliberation? No, in deliberation. That's great. Okay, any other questions on that? Perfect. So moving on to deliberate, oh, policy committee update. Just 
Um, there's only one policy on the agenda this month. We have reviewed some. We reviewed advertising in schools. I forget the number, the letters, but um, have found that we're pretty, that was reviewed recently and we're very compliant with that. Beth is currently working on our concussion policy. It is a very significant, um, detailed policy, and we have new suggestions from the state, uh, from NHSA, uh, NHSBA, so we're working on that. Um, how to give kids concussion. How to give kids yeah. concussion. No, exactly. no. <laughs> uh, and we are really stuck a little bit because our policy is quite lengthy, and yet it's very different from what the recommended policy is, so you might see us try to do a replacement, um, total replacement of that. And then um, finally we have, um, was there anything else I was supposed to update on? I can't remember now. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to Class hey, Krista. Yeah? Community used to school. Wasn't it you and I way back in the day when we were drafting that concussion policy? It was a committee, I thought, according to the notes. Yeah, I, I, Dr. Capetto was involved. There was a, there was quite the. Well, yeah, and Beth is working with our, you know, m multiple people in our district, trainer, you know, um, coaches, school uh, nurses, athletic nurses, everyone to kind of look at everything, principals, all of that. So it's it's just to let you know it's in the works. And then the other thing, as Tim just pointed out, we're also still working on the community use of school buildings. We have that with Jim O'Shaughnessy. He's supposed to be reviewing because there's a lengthy list of rules and regulations, and we want to make sure those are legal. And there's also a significant comment about protesting in that, and so we need to make sure that's legal. So we've got some things that we're working on. So there's a lot of things that are going on in policy, but the thing that we're bringing to you to today is actually a deliberative item. Um, so we're going to, um, um, yes. We had student conduct too. What? Student conduct, JIC. Yes, student conduct is what we're working on there. Being hashed out. Right. And Cindy, want to be a part of it? Yes. Can you call her? So Cindy can be part of the liberation. Once you get Cindy on, we'll move on to um, the class rank policy. Up a lot of what? Up a lot of Did I? That's great. Did we? You people are so good at moving things quickly. It's <laughs> awesome. We have a lot of really loud. Is she on? That's okay. <laughs> so our first deliberative item is policy IKC class rank, which is coming from policy after having been kicked back to policy, and this is our fourth reading. I'm going to talk about it before we actually make a motion to deliberate, just so that we can all present it, and then we'll make a motion. Can you hear, um, Cindy? Can you hear, yes. Cindy? Okay. So um, we obviously kicked this one around a lot. Um, the policy committee is made up of our two principals, Gina, Krista, Beth, and I. Um, the most important piece to the policy committee is that we get rid of or eliminate announcing top 10. Um, that was something that has been really important from the Instructional Practices Steering Committee. That is the top 10 committee voted 11 to 1 to get rid of top 10. That was the language that was the focus of those two committees, and that was the language that's been the focus of the policy committee. Our sticking point is clearly we have an exception related to the military, and members of our committee feel really strongly that that's what was there, and that's was not really part of the committee discussions, and it's been there. Um, so we had some questions last um, month related to the statement, not the military thing, but academic achievement will be recognized at graduation as per procedures outlined in um, the program of study. So we talked about removing that statement or keeping it just as academic achievement and not putting it in the program of studies, but since the program of studies is an electronic document, we can add this language related to academic achievement into the program of studies tomorrow if we wanted to. Maybe not tomorrow. I don't want to promise tomorrow. But So if you go back into your agenda packet, you'll find that um, I'm scrolling backwards because I don't have my agenda in front of me. Um, Rick has provided us with 
what a Latin honors program would look like, just to give more clarity to the public and to all of you what that, what, what's been proposed. And, and the Instructional Practices Committee did meet on this back in February of 2020 and um, came up with these, uh, these cutoffs, if you will, thresholds to meet to achieve, uh, to be recognized in some capacity at graduation. Um, this does not mean name called, it means a recognition in the program, potentially <coughs> accord. Um, and I just want to give clarity and, and understanding of where these numbers come from. The highest honor would be summa cum laude, which would be a student who obtains a 4.2 and above. The reason for that number is that the GPA, uh, a GPA of a 4.33 would be an A plus in every single class that the student has taken for four years. But that can be achieved without any weighting. You do not need to take a weighted class to get a 4.33. You can take just you can take all classes with no weight and get a 4.33. So we wanted this to be um, a, attainable from anyone in any situation. Any student taking any type of class who's achieving at a A plus level in all of A A plus level could get that summa cum laude. And so it doesn't. There's no. You don't need to manipulate your classes. There's no game playing. You take the classes you want, you just have to do exceedingly well in them. And that is why there's three levels. The next level down is a 4.0, just going 0.2 down. And then we go down to a 3.8 for cum laude. And keeping in mind that in order to become a National Honor Society student, you need a 3.7. 3.7. 3 so this is a, a little bit higher than the, than the National Honor Society student because we are you know, we want to make this special, an achievement, and, and a goal. Again, the reason the Latin honor system works for those of us in policy is because it is not competing against anyone else. It's just reaching for your best efforts and your strongest efforts. It is still focused on <coughs> grades, but it gives people an opportunity to kind of push themselves. As a reference, we pulled up some other um, Latin honors program, you know, numbers from the various colleges. Um, this is what we're throwing out there. The reason to keep it in the program of studies and to not put it in policy is we can see how it works and what, what we are seeing from it. What are we seeing? Um, so that is sort of where we are with that piece of the policy. Um, I'd like to have just a quick, you know, response to that and then we're going to make a motion to try and get this through. So. Sure, Tom. Are you, at, at last month's meeting, there was a request from some, it wasn't mine, so I'm not, about uh, getting some additional information about what the academies require. Was there anything done on that? I think what our answers from the academies have been, I don't remember if there was a request, but I don't think we did additional work on okay. that. Our sense was it's two and two. It's like, We've spoke, spoken to five, I it think. It was three and two, or two mm -hmm. and three, but it, it was three. still, like, what came back is it was very subjective depending on who you asked, like, who the actual mm -hmm. uh, representative for our school was. It wasn't, right. it's not coming from, like, the top. It's coming from a representative. They, so they are admission reps, just right? Just to pull, yeah. It's a, it was to pull where, like, a general sense, and it kind of gave us the answer. It was very mixed. The answer was very mixed. And I just want to say, we've had this on our docket, <laughs> four months, and we've received a few emails regarding this, I believe, mm -hmm. and if, in terms of public input, we have heard from more people wanting us to make an exception for the military than, than people who haven't. Um, however, we have not really heard from many people who want us to keep the top <coughs> on. but um, so that's just and, and you know what? Here's the thing. It comes. It comes down to for me is I'm going to go either way. So, but all right. Um, so I'd like to to make a motion. I need someone to make a motion to accept the fourth reading and adopt policy IKC class rank. So moved. Moved by Beth. Second. Seconded by Kate. Is there any discussion? Anything um, else? 
I, you know, I've spoken my piece. I don't want that um, exception in there. I don't want it in there for the service members, but I feel so strongly about um, changing this and moving forward with this that I, I will still support this. But I, I've spoken my piece. Uh, I think, it, you know, we've talked about it in the future as we gain more information, then maybe we change it down the road. Um, and I would really like to see that, but that's a down the road. Well, as I stated in our last meeting, and I stated it in policy, um, I feel strongly about keeping it because um, I do feel strongly about giving a tax. I do agree with that. And I like the Latin honor system that has been put in place, and I support putting that in um, in our program of studies. Program studies. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I. Being that we have gotten mixed information on the academies, I, one of the reasons, the biggest reason we did this was we didn't want to hurt kids anymore. We felt like the top 10 really was hurting kids in so many ways. And so we've had this in place, this exception in place for six years. And Rick has said there has not been one case, not one case where someone has come and said, well, the academies get to have the rank given them too, so can we have it? So it hasn't been abused, it hasn't been misused. The people that apply to be at the academy have probably made <coughs> these plans many years in advance. This isn't something that I think junior year, someone goes, you know what, sounds good, Naval Academy, I think I'm gonna do it. <laughs> There's so much involved in it. And so I feel that I wouldn't want to risk the chance, and we wouldn't know, we wouldn't know that us not giving rank would hurt that kid, but it's, we're looking at two different applications, and you're talking to, your military people are looking at it, and again, we've been given different information, and they're looking and they see all the box checked for one candidate, and all of them except one checked for this candidate, I just wouldn't want to have somebody take that and go, all right, and just move on. And we would never know that the candidate didn't get in because the box wasn't checked or because they just weren't the candidate they were looking for. And I, we just wouldn't have that information. I don't think it's harmful to keep it in there. At least, I mean, keep it in until we absolutely know for sure there's no possible way we are going to do that. I just don't see the ri I don't see the harm in doing it. We don't want to harm kids, except that maybe that small minority that are going to apply to the academies, we're going to take that risk. And I just I don't think it's worth taking the risk. I just don't I don't understand why we would want to take that out. It hasn't harmed us yet. I can't see as we change this and move forward how it's going to harm us. It's one of those things that. I've been on this board for nine years. I'm a compromiser. I give in to a lot of things that I don't fully, completely agree with sometimes, but I understand the merits of them and I'm willing to compromise because of that. This is one of those where I feel really strongly about it because I just don't want to hurt hurt kids. And, and I do, I, I just don't see the harmful part of it. And, I, I, I mean, I really do understand that this might not be something that we need to put forward. But we've also been given information that other schools do not rank, and they're getting kids in. So they're, they have policies that say we don't rank. But we also don't know what that means. They don't rank unless they're asked for it, in which case they give it. They don't put that in their policy, but that might be something they do. We do know there are schools that are kind of doing that. And again, not to break the rules, but because that's how they kind of do things. So I just don't want to, us, because we are very much the rule followers and we follow to the letter of the law in our policies, I don't want to take a situation where we hurt a kid because we won't, we won't give in on that one. So that's my opinion. I. I probably will pass with my no vote, but I won't support well, it if so we take the exception So far it's in there out. still, so we haven't? It's in there, yes, so I will vote yes for, for <laughs> it now. It's in so, there now. No, Krista, just to be clear, you want it in? She wants yes. it in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's it. Is there any other comments? Krista, thank you so much for that. Are there any more comments? Because I'd love just to take a vote. Just in case you wanted my opinion. 
Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't read your question. Any more? I think at this point we can call the vote, but it has to be a roll call vote. So I'll start with you, Krista, because I know which way you're going. Krista, aye. I think Cindy's on your deck. Cindy? No. Cindy's no. Holly, aye. Oh, aye. Liz? Liz, are you there? Are you there, Liz? Aye. Yeah, aye. Beth, aye. Kate, aye. Okay. That passes. Six, one. I feel like I should cry in celebration for that. <laughs> okay, Cindy got to hear that all. That's great. Okay, so I'm going to need a little help with the motions for the spot. I can help you with that. I just was just. Um, oh. Are you there? All right, we got So you, we have a couple of um, recommendations for. So let's start with have, the first recommendation coming out of our non public session. I have a recommendation regarding administrative positions. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm going to make the motion myself, if that's okay. Um, I would like to make a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendations that Tim Grizzone be appointed as the principal of Hollis Brookline High School effective July 1st, 2021, this year. Do you have a second? Second. So that was motioned by Beth, seconded by Kate. Um, I don't know if we need any discussion. I know I'm pretty happy about it. So um, is there some, anybody? Yeah. I just like to make it clear, although the word appointment is being used, this, this there was an application process with interviews and the whole thing. This was, this was a normal hiring process in which Tim emerged as the candidate of choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, again, we need a roll call vote. On. Is there any other discussion? I'm happy. Oh, yeah, happy. Okay. So, uh, Krista. Krista, aye. Cindy. Cindy, aye. Holly, aye. Tom, aye. Beth, aye. Liz, Liz, Liz aye. Kate, aye. Excellent. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tim. Congratulations, Tim. Aye, aye, aye. Thank you, everyone. And with, and with everyone that, Thank you. Continue, continue to leave, yes. Excuse. Continue to leave, <laughs> excuse, but we're congratulations. Fair. So happy. Thank you. Continue. <laughs> you, you can leave if yeah, you like. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, you everyone. Excuse. Get a new job. And Have a great night. That's, that's, yeah. Okay. Um, I have we, another um, sure. motion regarding, um, uh, let's see. Another situation. Yeah, sure, another, yeah, I'm, sure. an employee leave. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation to extend leave to a co-op employee. A co-op, I think they say administrator, right? Um, that's not what it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, yep, I, I left it okay. this way. Okay. Um, is it, are we defining the length of the extension in the motion or not? You kind of did like, I mean, I won't go over what I told you and then come back. I think we're good with that. Okay. Okay. Can I have a second? Second. Second, Kate. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to discuss this. All those in favor, I need a roll call vote again. Krista? Krista, aye. Cindy? Cindy, aye. Holly, aye. Oh, aye. Beth, aye. Liz? Liz, aye. Kate, aye. Okay, great. <clears throat> so that's 700. Okay, we need a motion regarding the articles of agreement. Does somebody have a plan for how to make a motion on that? Holly's on the table. I did not have that drafted. This is your baby. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I move that we put forth a warrant article to amend the articles of agreement for Hollis Brookline Cooperative School District uh, as proposed in the agenda packet subject to review by uh, District Legal Counsel. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Beth. Is there any discussion? Okay, I think we covered that already. So, Krista? Krista, aye. Cindy? Cindy, aye. Holly, aye. Tom, aye. Beth, aye. Liz? Liz, aye. Kate, aye. Great. So that's also approved 7-0, and somebody captured that. Did you write that down? Well, that Donald captured Don. it. Okay, Don. <laughs> yeah, Don. okay so Don's we amazing. still have the CBA and the um, annual meeting. We'll do the 
annual meeting. Did, did we have to do something about I thought we didn't. We're not we doing that. Know. Okay. I'm sorry. I take notes. No, then just, I run I, the I'm meeting. Then I get confused. I'm to help. Then, then I have people texting me that the video is not working. It's all just. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shambles here. <laughs> okay. So now we need um, a motion to um, for the collective bargaining agreement. So did you want to present more, or did you? Well, I'm, I'm going to make the motion. Okay. Um, I move that the Hollis Brookline Cooperative School Board um, ratify the tentative agreement reached with the Hollis Education Association for a professional staff three-year contract for school years 2021 through 2024. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Second? Second. Seconded by Beth. Mo moved by Tom, seconded by Beth. Okay, at this point, Tom, would you like to present on that a little sure. bit? Sure. Um, <clears throat> going through some of the details, a significant portion of the contract <clears throat> revision it, uh, to correct uh, language that is either um, obsolete because it was put into the last contract on a one-time only basis or to uh, identify things that, that were not, have not been found to be what we're actually doing. Um, before you, you have uh, a summary of the changes. And unless there are questions as we go through it, I'm just going to sort of hit on the highlights. Um, the first item is <clears throat> Article 5, which is staff evaluation. The current contract has a very long, involved, articulated process that we don't use. Um, what the new language essentially does is it refers to the professional growth master plan, which is uh, which has details and it is a state-approved plan. Uh, this language is was based upon language being used in the Hollis School District as well. And it just, uh, it moves the evaluation process description outside of the contract to what is essentially a living document that is also state approved. Um, moving down, and, and we there were some items that need to be preserved for professional rights and things, and that language remains intact. <clears throat> Article 8. And Appendix B is the salary adjustment. Um, and real briefly, for school year 2021, uh, those eligible will receive step increases in accordance with the table. And those employees um, and, the, and the salary table itself will increase by 0.75% relative to the current 2021 salary table. Uh, for the second year of the contract, same, same applies except the, the change to the salary table will be 1.5%. And in the third year, the change to the salary table is 1.75%. The dollar amounts associated with those Year one increase is a total of $228, excuse me, $228,316. Year two is $294,057 or $294,057. Year three is $330,369. Those amounts will be stated in the warrant article. Um, the, the lane change information 8.3 is primarily just, just correcting some language with, which was causing confusion. Um, same with uh, <coughs> talking about the uh, changing from per diem to, uh, to hourly rate because of the way that we pay people for partial, partial days um, during orientation. This is update. Uh, and 
uh, <coughs> one of the, the larger changes was Article 10.6, Section 2, where we are taking <coughs> what we learned in creating the sidebar agreement to better capture what's done in, with the middle school schedule and committing it to the contract itself. Uh, it's, it's just massaging it to clarify the um, allocation of, of prep time primarily. Uh, <clears throat> we have agreed to, agreed or offered to, to increase the uh, rate paid when a teacher gives up their, um, their off time during the day to substitute for uh, another teacher from $25 an hour to $35 an hour in the hopes that <coughs> we will be able to continue to uh, keep schools uh, in normal operation during times when staff members have to step out and be out of their class. And uh, the last thing is noteworthy is that the provisions of this agreement will be effective July 1st, 2021, and shall remain in full effect and binding on the parties until June 30th, 2024. This language is consistent with the uh, process of what's called standardization, which means that that uh, all terms of the contract are valid for all three years. This is the same process that has been employed in both the Hollis and the Brookline school, Elementary School Districts, but it does need to be uh, acknowledged. Um, it is not a required element in New Hampshire, and it is a negotiated element of the contract. Any questions? Um, I don't have any questions. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, anybody have? Co I do have a comment. I just wanted to commend you all for getting through this. It was a really short timeline to negotiate this, and um, you know, considering the pandemic and when we could start and all of that. And I want to commend you, your team, um, the time and effort you've all put into making sure this happens. I commend the administration. Um, and I'd also um, like to say a positive thing about the teachers because this is a, this is, it's hard work trying to advocate for yourself and make sure that you are getting um, needs met. And so I, uh, I appreciate everyone's efforts in this. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to say that uh, the team worked very hard on it and, and it was a, a, good, a very good team. Cindy Van Conant, Liz Brown, and we had very strong support by our administration, uh, Gina, Andy, uh, Kelly Steely, were involved in all the negotiations. This was conducted entirely by remote. Um, and my thanks to the, the members of the, the HEA team. Um, they took time to both explain their positions and to carefully consider ours, which is what I think led to a a successful completion of the process. Great. Thank you. So at this point, we'll vote on the motion, right? So Krista? Krista, aye. Cindy? Cindy? Cindy, aye. Holly, aye. Paul, aye. Beth, aye. Liz, aye. Kate, aye. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I believe that's all the deliberations that we have, right? You were, well, you were going to was I going to do anything? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wrote down the warrant underneath, but you already discussed the we warrant. We did the warrant. We did sorry. everything. So I just did them in a little different yep. order than what we had discussed. Sorry. So Because I wrote them down. Different order. Okay, so at this point, I need a report out by the process observer, and then we will be going into a second non-public. But you guys can also. So um, go ahead, Tom. Uh, this was an extremely packed yeah. agenda. Yeah, it was. And... Uh, allowing for the, the items which were not anticipated in the construction of the agenda, we actually went faster than predicted. Um, we had a very important period of public input, and that always involves time, 
but it's time well spent because that's the only way we can really operate. So I want to, especially with, with dealing with those requirements and things, I think I think you kept the meeting going really well. And, uh, and Tim's not here, but I really want to thank Tim because Tim stepped up and, and, and really well represented all of his, his colleagues in some very critical discussions. So it was a, it was a very good meeting. Thank you. Okay, so at this point I need a motion to go into non-public, we'll be moved by roll call. Session presumed to RSA 91-A, colon 3, 2, part A, the dismissal promotion or compensation of any public employee. Right, Matt, it is? Yeah. So moved. And moved by Beth, seconded by Tom. Krista. Krista, aye. Cindy. Cindy, aye. Holly, aye. Tom, aye. Beth, aye. Liz, aye. Kate, Kate, aye. Okay, so we are officially in non-public at 929, and we will say goodbye to the administrators, and I'm going to take that.